right I thought I'd show another one of my uh, shop built gadgets this is a uh, pressure tester negative pressure tester for waterproof watches um, it's based on the principle of uh, an Elma unit that uses uh, a negative pressure to see if there's any leak in gaskets um, around the case back and the crown uh, primarily uh, it uses a um, retired uh, surgical suction unit delivers uh, a negative uh, 80 kilopascals uh, at its marching rate which is about now uh, I've uh, connected that to a platform that I've built myself this is a Delrin um, plate for uh, air tightness issues and uh, there is also a rubber gasket flat gasket down here this crystal dome or this uh, acrylic dome is a, um, a spare part for the original Elma machine so that is nothing I've done myself uh, this little guy here is a man uh, manifold like intake manifold tester gauge uh, that I got from a, uh, an auto supply shop in town and this is just a standard one hundredth of a millimeter uh, dial test indicator uh, placed on a mount that I've cobbled up myself and affixed to this wooden base inside the wooden base is a, a, an air channel that connects to a series of tubes uh, in the bottom of this base so what I have here is a valve that I just tried out and it happened to be pretty much airtight. Uh, I have no um, no leakage. The, the original Elma machine doesn't actually have a, uh, a pressure gauge. So I added this one just to be able to ensure that I don't have any undue leakage through this guy uh, that would show up as a negative um, uh, leak result on the dial test indicator. The way this works is that you uh, release the vacuum and you can follow this down here. Depending on the type of watch you have to be a bit careful um, to not pop a crystal. So for a uh, waterproof watch with an acrylic crystal, uh, an armored crystal, you would probably go a bit less than you would with a watch such, such as this, uh, which has a, a mineral crystal and it's uh, an actual diver's watch. Um, What's more is there to say? Um, it works by measuring the expansion of the case. So when the negative pressure is applied, the case will bulge somewhat. And what you're looking for is uh, that increase in volume. That signifies that, that there's no obvious leak. Uh, there, like the air is trying to expand and trying to get out but can't. Uh, and also then you hold the negative pressure and you want to see the needle not move during that time uh, and then when you release the pressure what you're looking for is the case returning to its original size this case is pretty tough uh, this is a Seiko Prospex diver uh, rated at uh, I think 20 atmospheres so uh, there is very very little movement in the needle uh, when I apply the pressure you'll see that uh, in a moment but the most important thing is that it returns to its original size uh, and not below because this method of testing for waterproofness is actually more useful uh, that's at least what I've heard in my experience so far than the um, uh, immersive test where you go up like up, up to 20 atmospheres of course that's necessary for a uh, watch that's rated to that um, to, to those specifications but for everyday use for uh, washing the dishes for um, like walking in the rain or just on a very humid day this is actually more telling of how waterproof a watch will be during those conditions because when you apply external pressure to a watch you will actually compress the seals meaning that it will be become more watertight the deeper it goes until something fails. Using this technique, you get an idea of um, if the seals are actually tight at, um, at one atmosphere, 
that is which is all around us all the time uh, or actually even below so if, if a watch is waterproof during this test it will uh, take splashes it will take a humid environment it will take uh, rain uh, without water getting into the case which might not always be true for a watch that is actually um, waterproof during a certain atmospheric pressure a positive atmospheric pressure right so without fur further ado um, I have a negative pressure worked up on the suction unit and I will apply negative pressure to this watch by flipping this lever here so I'll bring you in so you can see both dials it's going to be a very very subtle moment of the um, dial test indicator there we go and I'm tapping the base because the dial indicator is a little bit sticky when it comes to these resolutions so I'm going to max out on the suction so I'm losing something somewhere, so I'm a little bit over 60 here. I'm not really sure about the uh, accuracy of this gauge. Either I just want to see I don't lose any negative pressure when I close this, which I'm going to do now. Oh wait, I did. Sorry. So 70. All right, and now I'm closing it. And as you can see, the needle has moved a little, little tiny bit. Okay, so now I'm disconnecting the hose. And as you can see, I'm not losing any pressure, it's holding. And the needle is holding as well. Okay, so for a proper test you would leave this B for a minute or two. For the case of this demonstration, I'm going to release the pressure. And then as you can see both dials again. And I'm tapping the base again. So you can see that the needle is slowly returning as the case shrinks. And it's brought back to its original position. That's all there is to it. I can show the underside of the machine as well. Just 